Welcome to Amuna is our future with True Love Daily. Let's bring it into our real time daily avoda of being beautiful people that we are. Thank God we've found ourselves in Holy Jerusalem. It's going to make a little, there we go. Fantastic. So happy to be here. Thank God everyone made it here today. We are a day later than usual. We are on Tuesday. It's 3.30. We usually have our weekly Amuna class on Monday at 2.30 or 2.45 Israel time, usually 3 o'clock if you're adding the later start. And thank God, guess what? We do not have Wi-Fi. The good news is that we are getting Wi-Fi, very high level Wi-Fi, and that's what's been delaying it. Also, the family who were sorting out, the Orish family, was stuck in Istanbul, in Egypt. And we ask everyone to pray, Baruch Hashem, for the Rav, Rav Sholem Orish himself, our beautiful host of our studio in Yushalayim, Rav Kodesh. We pray for Sholem Ben Yemna. He should have a full Shlema. He came into our studio on a wonderful, wonderful class with um, our beautiful guests, Y Shafario and Jonathan Hill. He came very halash, very weak. And uh, all of you guys are asked to pray for him. And part of this class is also a dedication to my good friend, Yehuda Leib Ben Shina Malka. Yeah. And also Leah Rifka Ben, uh, sorry, Bat Shina Malka and Shina Malka Bat Sarah. These are the names I ask everyone to dedicate the Shia for the healing of Ravorish and my good friend, Jeff Pulver, Lauren Pulver and their mother. That's who the names, Hebrew names I just read out. And all the information is below underneath the class. Shalom Ben Yemna. Everybody knows the Ravosh's name already because we've had to pray for him many times. And we know that the prayers work. So we're dedicating our class to go ahead together with true love. We're at the climax of Shovim. It's a very big, powerful climax Shabbos this week. Pasha's Mishpotim has a lot going on. Go to the Pasha, open up the Chumash, open up the Chumshei Chumshei Torah, the five books of Moses, as they call it, and open it up. And thank God, we're giving thanks and praise that the studio and with the Wi-Fi, without the Wi-Fi, everything's working, thank God. And you guys can always go afterwards to our podcast, Brothers of Israel, and you can also go to our SoundCloud, Brothers of English, which, thank God, it is doing great. We've got a lot of the Amuna classes there uploaded already. Every day we're trying to get another one up. And with your support and your sharing and your liking, it gives us that extra push, that motivation. And once again, you can always partner with AmunaLive.com. But with that all said, once again, go to the Chumash. Open up a book. Remember, we used to have those books. You remember? You blow a bit of dust off them. They're sitting on your shelf. I don't even see one around me right now in the studio, funny enough. Everything's on phones and, you know, tablets. And we've got our camera all surrounded by cameras and microphones. And, and thank God, a little bit of L'chaim in the middle of the class. But the point is that we are, thank God, even though we're in a technological generation of 2020, 2021, and it's a challenging time that we're going through, through with the coronavirus persisting and that's what's affecting our friends in America, New York, the people we're dedicating the class to, that they should, everybody should have a full recovery. But at the same time, we have Chumshei Chumshei Torah, we have a Pasha's Mishpotim to remind us that there's this whole yam, this whole sea of Torah, of holy spiritual texts available in the world, in the print. And online as well, thank God. Everything, obviously, that's in print now probably has been uploaded by now. And it's this yam. That's the end of Shovevim. Shovev, yam. Yud, mem is Yisro, Mishpotim. The first two letters of Yisro, Mishpotim is yam. It's a sea. It's a sea of Torah. It's a big ocean of spirituality, of laws and halakha and guidance and very deep aspects. And would you know, it's a very famous concept, L'chaim, everyone. We had a blessing before the class. But would you know, and most people don't know this, the Pasha's Yisro, which we had last week where we get the Ten Commandments, everyone thinks Nasa Vinishma. That's where we hear the Jewish people say, we, we will Nasa, we will do and we will listen. We will do and we will listen. That's when Hashem hears us we, in Pasha's Yisro. We spoke about listening last week and really in integral way, integral truth, to be really honest and straight. Now we're talking more about the love aspect, but it's funny enough, comes out Pasha's Mishpatim is really where Nasa and Ishmael is actually written. It's not written in the previous Pasha, but last week's Pasha just says uh, Nishma, I think. Yeah, is that right? You guys correct me. So, or Nasa, which one? 
help me. I think it's Nishma, yeah, that we should listen. That's what we spoke of Yishma. We spoke about Yisra will listen. This week is Naseh and Nishma. It's about actually doing it and bringing it alive into our daily life. And that goes very well with our bi-weekly United Souls course, which you guys have been asked on the side to sign up to. And in the description over there, there's a course, a bi-weekly course that's been postponed this week. That's why we're doing the live feed on a Tuesday of our weekly Amuna class. And Boch Hashem. We had the opportunity. I see it right now. It just came off my YouTube on my on my uh, smartphone, work smartphone. Because once again, you guys, I don't actually own any phones. All these phones, everything in front of me was gifts for me or for someone else. Thank God, you come through this world. I was named after a holy person named Desla. He was all sold by the end of his life. He didn't even own a pen. So you know, obviously, everything I have goes to my family. But the point is, that kind of precious, that kind of separation from this world. The whole point of it is just to get more soulful and more inspired and more motivated and not to, God forbid, wither away. So thank God I do have a holy HS Kyle soulmate who looks after me and made sure that I have a nice clean top on. She got me this recently for the winter. And thank God she makes sure I look like a mensch. So thank God we don't know everyone's blessed to have such a dedicated person. We are weekly now, three times a week actually, going for a run together, doing some exercise, keeping that balance. But that's part of the United Soul experience that you first have to find that soul level. And then you can join on with a soul mate and then you can bring souls into the world through that experience and that's the whole power of Kabbalah Sotoyre of what happened in Pasha Zisro and Pasha Mishpatim in these special times that we are finding ourselves in the climax of Shobhavim that we're now in a time of love a time of unity, a time of oneness, of the vacas of Hashem. The, the Hashem is revealing himself, the Kodesh Baruch Hu, the creator of the world. People call it the universe, whatever they want to call it. It's For me, it's Hashem Yisbarach. It's, uh, it's the name, it's the one who reveals himself to us in the most intimate way, in the most intense, simsum way of through the Yudke Vavke, through this revelation of the name of God, he's able to constantly manifest his love towards us on a daily momentary moment. And that's the idea. People talk about, you know, the power of now and the idea of healing earth from that famous writer that Oprah loves so much and has pushed out there so big in such a big way. And all these other famous people out there who talk about the concept of living now. Jeff Pulver himself used to talk about it a lot and probably still does in our Zula. He's more focusing on passion and other things right now. But the concept of now of living and experiencing life on a daily level that's something which takes a certain level of focus but also takes a certain level of preparation and learning and it takes a certain experience of soul a person has to understand that in order to find that power within that soul within you have to sort of remove a lot of layers of ego and distraction as we've been speaking about remember let's just go over quickly since this is a climax of show with him we started off with encouragement before you can do anything you have to feel that love at the beginning of this process you have to get the energy to get up in the morning you have to get say the mode i was trying to get my son up this morning wow what a story to get my son out of bed a 16 year old tipish as they call it in israel it's the time where they call it <laughs> i don't want to translate that but anyway Anyway, you, whoever knows Hebrew will understand, but it's a crazy time. I was 16 months also. Maybe I was in a slightly different society and world back there in London. But the point is that it's a hard time to get out of bed in the morning. So we start off with a lot of encouragement. I don't know if I was so encouraging, but that would be the kind of way. That's what my wife does so amazingly and expertly. She gives a lot of encouragement to my children and that gives them the strength to get up and that with that Ayin Tava and that Nakuda Tova, as Rabbi Nachman says, to wake yourself up with the Nakuda Tova, with the positive aspects. And that gives you the strength of character and the strength of will to be able to break out of that restraint of sleep and that's something i really wanted to talk about today that when you're going out of egypt you have to understand and that's how we started say for shmos now how you go out of egypt with of all the inspiration from say for Baratius, from avram yitzhak yaakov sarah Rivka, Rochel, Le, all that inspiration to bring that koyach, that power, that energy, that beginning that the Jewish people started off with in the world, that fire of Avram Avinu, that Aish, that Emes and Sholem is Rashi Teva's Aish, that Aleph and Shin, the Aish, Avram and Sarah, they started off with that truth and peace, that energy, that fire that brought out only positivity, not burnt things, but, but lit up things that inspired. And that's the kind of fire and inspiration we need to begin. Show with him. We start these the, to go out of your bed, to go out of your restraints. That's like the moshul, the of the nimshul that we're stuck in this place of the bonds 
to put us to sleep. That was the same as Rabbi Nachman talks about in the Kuti Alachas. I'm learning with my son over there on, on Megillah, Hilkas Megillah. He's talking about in this time period right now, the Jewish people were asleep before Purim. And that was the whole Kitruk. That was the whole way that Haman was going to speak bad about us in, in exile, that we're asleep. We're asleep in exile. We're not really doing the mitzvahs. God forbid we're busy with talking not good. Everyone's infighting. And as we spoke about last week, about the importance of listening and communicating where there's a lot of divisiveness right now and that was what was going on amongst Jewish people in that time and it's going again as we see right now with all the div- divisiveness in the polit- political world and in the emotional level of all the divorce God forbid all these kind of things going on around and around that this is the opposite of what we need that lack of unity that's why Haman was seeing us asleep in exile and that was how he was able to bring down the Gezerah that seemingly terrible decree just like Hitler Machshima, wanted to destroy us all so that Haman wanted to destroy us all so how do we find a half a who as we're going to have this Shabbos it's going to be Rosh Chodesh Ada Mishan English Ada Mam Simcha we're going to turn it around we have a new song coming out in this and black and it's been a half a who <laughs> someone in England is uh, Baruch Hashem. It's a very, very uplifting energy from a rabbi in the JLE over there. And then Nissan Black is doing a really awesome rap. I already, I've heard it because I'm involved in getting the track out and it's going to have a feature video. Please go. It's going to be a lot of fun. But the point is that Vanahafahu, that's what it's the main point of the song. Vanahafahu, the Kodesh Baruch Hu, the Kodesh Baruch Hu, the one, the blessed be one, is Vanahafahu. It's turning everything around, all this, the seemingly darkness we're seeing in our life. This whole Corona challenge, she's turning it around. It's all going to make sense somehow. Last year it began at the end of Purim, is, I think is when I had it personally, and that's where my, my 41st birthday coming up in this month of Adam Ishinikas Adam on Besimcha, a new beginning for me personally in this world. My birthday celebrate that that opportunity that we came into the world of giving life, and now we have the ability to give that life, give blessing to others, and Baruch Hashem, I had the opportunity to sit weekly and speak to you guys and bi-weekly in the United Souls course, which you guys need to sign up to. Hopefully the link, if it's not alive, the link on the Eventbrite page, you can join on the LinkedIn page and then we'll update the Eventbrite shortly for the 23rd of February will be the next one. Two weeks from today at this time, 3.30, and it will be a full hour, a full hour class on course and things that we're talking about here much more organized and set out in a format, course format, where, and we can interact, where you guys can actually talk back to me in the Zoom format, and that allows a lot of uh, opportunity. And plus, it's in the, brings you into the Pol Vidu, which is the uh, beautiful network there, and Zula, where we can have, on a weekly level, interactions through all the different Zulas, all the different get-togethers, that's the translation, all the different um, communal opportunities that give us that feeling of togetherness, that right now is, can be very much threatened. And I just want to go into my notes a little bit, that as I'm going through the climax of Shovim, we did a lot of private work. That was the first three weeks. So in order to break out that sleep, to break out that slumber, we have to do that private work once again, to be proactive, to be filled with love, and to have that mission statement, to have our goals, dreams, values, to put that into reality, and to be truthful, to be integral, and to have that into your schedule, to know what your priorities are. That's the time management, but we said even better, energy management. That's a step up from previous courses I've done before in these kind of ideas. We're moving up a well, thanks to Tim Ferriss to energy management and we have done that private work and that gives us power during this challenging time period now to move forward into a public sphere so we have that motivation and even though we feel a bit limited physically emotionally for example we didn't have the ability to be with all our family and friends for so long personally I haven't seen my father in person for over a year and it's my mother's birthday tomorrow and I was planning to be in England right now and be able to celebrate with her her birthday her 75th Fifth, Leona. She should live time in the twenties and dedicate this class also to her and to her happy birthday. And Baruch Hashem, you guys for tuning in. I'm sure you're all experiencing and resonating that it is a hard physical and emotional experience this last 20, 2021 20, already Corona challenge filled time period where we have felt much more isolated more than ever. So what are we going to do about it? So we have to find new motivation. We have to constantly, like we said, Hashem is constantly creating the world again and again. We have to do join into that energy and start again. I come here, the Wi-Fi is still not fixed because the people were stuck in Egypt who were meant to be sorting it out. So they managed to get out just in time, but they haven't had time yet to fix it here. So what? 
we go ahead anyway. We just turn on the phones and Baruch Hashem, they're working, even without Wi-Fi. So we have to thank Hashem. They're constantly putting energy and renewal into everything we're doing, as we spoke about last week as well, with the idea of listening. But that also goes together with the win-win concept. So not only do we have to listen, but we have to also join together with others, collaborate, mutual benefit. And that is the United Soul level. Yeah, truthfully, we've never been disconnected. That's what I wrote in the notes. We've never been disconnected. Isn't that encouraging? That we've never had real true disconnection. It's just a hiding, like it says in, in Megillus Hester. It's a hidden Hester, Hester, in the Pasha and Sefer Devarim. The idea of, of hiding this on top of hiding this is a very deep covering. But the point is that covering is just covering up a very profound truth that we're souls and then we're always united with our creator we're always one with our with our fellow human being that was very politically correct to me with our fellow human being we're always one and that gives us power to really join together consistently on a daily level and when you feel disconnected you're having an argument god forbid i was experiencing uh, some sort of funny um whatever the, whatever you want to call it something online about you know husband wife arguing back and forth or guy a boyfriend girlfriend arguing back and forth blah, 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 blah. but the truth is if you have that soulmate connection i experience this almost on a daily weekly level with my wife the my soulmate connection that gives you ability to go surpass whatever your disagreement are on whatever like the man woman differences or the emotional challenges you're having like you're not feeling so yourself you're a bit you know down about things like for example you know usually i'd be running a purim tour a pesach tour you know excited about all the opportunities instead <laughs> we're just doing a feature full of an hafahu yeah and you know it's not exactly what you know what previous years the, the level of projects and opportunities that I had, thank God. But at the same time, we're sitting in a studio and we have the opportunity to host 27 guests. We thank Hashem that we probably wouldn't have done such a thing. We would have just been kept flying around. And thank God I get to sit in the holiest city in the world and connect to all you guys without having to go on a plane. Isn't that amazing? And it's been amazing guests. I mean, why Shafaro and Yonison Hill was brilliant. The quality of music and who's coming this week please god if the rav is feeling well and it's up to all of us to pray for him shalom Bar to have a full refer so he can come to the class with full energy and we can start on time please god this week that was the first time he was late and that was because he wasn't feeling well it's never happened before in our class thank god he's always there waiting excited and motivated he's an example and we have to pray for his health we have to appreciate rav shalom Marish and all that he's put out there we have to pray for him and so this Shabbos, um, please God, after Mishpatim, we're going to have this Sunday on the new parshas of Truma, Tetzaveh, already on Rosh, after Rosh Chodesh, Ada will be in the month of Ada. We're going to start it with music, Amuna music, soulful music, and it's going to be Nuriel. Nuriel is an amazing band, and we're going to put up their links and stuff and promote their music. And one of the main songs that is, is when, when You Come, I think the new song they put out, it gives opportunity to listen to very sincere and soulful music. And that's something which we love here. We love in the studio soulful music. Don't you all love? I want to hear some feedback, guys. I'm seeing some hands and hearts. If anyone wants to say something, something positive, maybe ask a question, give me some ideas of other guests you'd like to have. The more you're interacting, the better these classes are. So let's just go next. What's after Nuriel? We're going to have, please God, Mendy Weinreb just before the week before Purim, because this year it's a three day Purim. Very exciting. And that's an opportunity to really come together on, on three days in Jerusalem, especially. It's Purim is Shulish, it's called. In the rest of the world, it will be the fast day and then Friday, Thursday night. Friday will be Purim. But for us in Jerusalem, we'll read the Megillah Thursday night, Friday, like everyone else. And that would be very powerful because everyone in the world will be reading the Megillah one time. Uh, Megillah Sester, Megala in the hiddenness, will see the light within the darkness, to see the truth within the covering up, to see the love on a daily level in our life, in our relationships. It's the kind of focus we're having today's class. And that's going to go into what? Shabbos. And then we're going to have, please God, in the rest, in Jerusalem, mostly Shabbos, Saturday night and Sunday, we're going to have the Sudas Purim. And we're going to have all the shlach manas and all the mitzvahs that we get to do beyond. So this is something very exciting about the next few weeks as we prepare. And like we said, Shobavim, which is a climax right now, we're finishing these six special weeks and we're going out of that sleep state. We've woken up. 
We're not in Egypt anymore. We're not stuck in this exile. We're in a state of awareness. Like we said, there's a yam of Torah. The Yisra Mishpatim is a yam. Is Yud Mem, is this Yam, the 50th level, the Nun Shari Bina, the Nun Shari Tshuva. This high level of revelation is happening in these two parshas of Nasa Vanishma, we're getting our crowns, we're getting awareness, Mokhin the Godless, as it's called in Sfarim. And in the holy books out there, it's called expanded consciousness. That's the way they explain it. But the point is that when you reach that level of expanded expansion and understanding, like this Shabbos, I felt a fire in the shul when we were praying, thank God, with all the rules of, you know, obviously of uh, with the hand sanitizers and the masks. And thank God I already had Corona. So I have the, uh, what do you call it, antibodies. Here, here's my, uh, it fell out of my pocket again. It's falling out of my pocket. I dropped it in the studio the other day. I just found it and it fell out again. We have our hand sanitizers. We have those those walls and everything protecting us from each other. Those plastic walls. Yeah, like like all this effort really makes such a difference. Thank God I had it anyway. But the, not laughing at the rules. But the point is that we have to realize that we're above that. I felt in sure certain experience of soul. There's a soulful connection above all these walls that are blocking us from each other and all this need to wear these covering up ourselves with masks like we do in Purim, that whole fancy dress. We have the opportunity to have that soul connection. That's the point, to get to the panemius, to get to the inner level. When you build these six weeks, the goal is now to enter into Truma Tetzava, which is the Mishkan, which is the idea of bringing it into the real space, the seventh level and the eighth dimension. I spoke about this in my United Souls book, which this is all an extract from. The idea that to understand understand the more we open ourselves to synergize and opportunities to truly collaborate the more we can succeed in our process of fighting our increased isolation exactly that's what i wrote in my book and it's exactly what we're discussing extract from united souls books to be announced when we're going to put that book out and you can also join on the relationship podcast as well because i'm going to discuss please god this week also about the idea of collaboration and firstly joining together from all the steps we've done these six weeks that we have the opportunity to join with other people now, to really connect with the people we love and to give over that love, to be overflowing with love, to be able to give that warmth. Like Ravosh, as tired as he was, he just, all he wanted when he came in this week was the class should go ahead. The first thing he said, l'chil, l'chil, begin, begin. He didn't want to hold it up anymore. And he, he was like, you know, <laughs> I was in shock and I had to begin the class and I was so worried. I was sitting there like, uh, and the Rav was like, next to me said, it's okay, the, the, he has this a lot, but he's, He's a soul, he's an ashama, overcame his body. And I've seen this with other righteous people that they so want to teach, they so want to care. Like it says in the Zohar and the Gemara in the Talmud, that the, the more the, the mother cow wants to nurse its calf, this idea that there's a concept of a teacher, of a giver, someone who's a no saint, who wants to give over this love, like Abba Mavino just wanted guests all the time. He's waiting in the boiling hot sun after he just had the bris mila in Pashas Vieira. And he's waiting for those three angels to come, those guests. He wants to guess so much that that rots and that started the whole Jewish people and started this whole process of Amunah in the world. He wanted that the, the world should join in that or Avram, the or of Amunah, the love that should go out into the world, the positivity, the, the oneness, the unification. That was the kind of energy that began the process and that's the power to get it started again and again on a daily level. You wake up with that love, the Rabbah Manasech, that tremendous Amunah that Hashem has in you. We shouldn't forget that throughout all these days, we always have special opportunities to touch base with a this by talking to Hashem. We should make a fixed time, talk to Hashem, talk to our Creator. For me, it's very important to write a book and other things you can do. For Hashem, you have opportunities, shachris, you have prayer services. These are all opportunities within a schedule, no matter what business. Like, would be the biggest corporate company. I remember working in for a corporate company in, in, in Beit Shemesh somewhere. And we used to stop every day, no matter how much pressure and trainings and all the stuff that was going on and the time restraints and we had to already get out there at a certain point there was no matter what there was a mincha in in this corporate company that we had the opportunity to pray together and there was even uh, some classes as well for people that could make time during their break time and i've heard about other such places like this that we have to break into our schedule opportunities to refill our soul to nourish our soul I was talking about it to my kids. It's very important. They play, they eat, they sleep, they drink. But then we're not just animals and we're not just like a sort of human 
functional beings we're not just computers or robots or whatever we have a soul that's the whole difference how are we going to survive the technical revolution how are we going to transform technology into a meaningful experience only one way through the soul how are we going to deal with this isolation that's create being created through the coronavirus through the vaccine through the all the different government pressures and political pressures and online pressures if you go online all this media all this how are you gonna for only one thing the soul to have a muna when you have a muna and you have a soul you're wet, woken up and i'm not talking about the political movement of being woke the opposite i'm talking about soul soul connects you it doesn't divide you you don't cancel anyone you just cancel your ego and your limitations and you want to connect outwards to people through positive communication as we spoke about in the last week's class about integral truth it has to stand on truth there has to be that meter of ms it was funny because last week we also had the the outside from the kotzka ever we didn't mention that we also had the fire from kotzka we had the fire from and love from labor lega his student that and also the isbisha student they had the this warmth and love and these holy sadiqim these righteous people just have a voice you give so much love and i have brook shem and rebbe who i was with the shabbos my rebbe the Tolna rebbe gave over such fire for Torah. And that's the kind of love we need to bring into our homes, into our life. That there is, thank God, even in this generation, you would be surprised. But no matter how much pain people are going through, and I do unfortunately get a lot of feedback about a lot of pain. People are having a hard time finding their soulmates. People are having a hard time making an income. People are having a hard time, all kinds of things, you know, with health issues. Everyone's going through something. The isolation, personally, for me, is really hard not to be with my family and friends. But the beautiful sweet sweetening of this whole situation not just to have the beautiful Torah and have spirituality but to have the opportunity to vanahafahu to turn it around to transform it what with the soul with a muna to understand that you every situation you're in is exactly where you're supposed to be that's the Amuna concept. And to realize that it's with Hashem's love, as we've been doing in the Amuna exercises, to realize Enom Avado, that's the Torah from Mashiach, that's the light of Mashiach, that everything is really nullified to that truth of oneness and what and togetherness and unification, as painful as it all feels. And we have to be real with the emotional level. We have to work it through. But what gives us that comfort, that even when we're in a time of of deep pain and struggle that we're always able to remind ourselves that our souls are united that we're together say we're having an argument with our spouse we really have to remind ourselves not i'm really one soul with this person and whatever we're going through that's holding us back to communicate with that person is just it's just a lack of a muna on some level and it's a lack of awareness it's a lack of communication and we can fix it if we allow ourselves to if we give us Sales tools, as we're going to discuss in my course, which I ask you to join the United Souls course. And we'll be going live another two weeks from this time, two weeks. Please, God, we're going to go into this concept of synergizing collaboration, bringing it into real everyday life. That is the real key to bring it into your home, to bring it into your work, to bring that spiritual work that you're doing, to bring that awareness, to bring it how you wake up in the morning, how you go to bed at night, how you eat, how you sleep, how you do everything, how you drink, how you connect with a person, how you physically connect with a person, whatever it is, socially, emotionally, spiritually, how you uplift the person. It's all going to be with soul. It's all going to be soulful. It's all going to be with that awareness that we're really together. And it's a beautiful concept that um, a very holy rabbi once taught me, and we'll end with this, that we say in the prayer service, and Baal Shem Tov Husseinu taught us, yeah, and his, in his holy Talmidim, his holy students, taught us this concept of Alva Solom Alva Rabba. Rav Simai Zilberberg said this over once, that when we pray that, and we marach, we lengthen that part of prayer service in prayer in shacharis in the morning prayers and we really my i we really think into avinu my father ava rachman it's also connected to these six seven weeks of show him with the truma tzave the avinu ava rachman harachim rachim alim sein beli bein ubina that's already the understanding please my father in heaven give me my understanding sein beli bein la havin la haskil to understand and to to really understand la haskil to have that clarity that's already the first week of show him to have that practice Activeness, to get begin, be, beginning with that love, that feeling of of validation, of understanding, and and true and true wisdom. to really listen. 
to really listen. We spoke about listening, but it's also the idea of know what our goals and what our purposes are. Limo Lamed to put into our day a schedule for everything has a time for learning and growth and Lamed, and then you can go public to teach it. Win win, we spoke about. Relish more to God. And that's the idea, once again, to listen, to be integral, but an integral listening. And that's what we spoke about last week. And lasso this week, Masha's Mishpotim is to do. Yeah, the Kaim is cultivate Salma so it can be a hava to to uh, uh, be able to bring all the Torah to all. The, remember, if the world was created through the Torah, through like we've spoken once through the cinema, like through the what do you call it, the the film, and that the light of Hashem shone through the letters of the Torah into the world, and that created Mishdachu Baraita Boy Alma. Hashem created the world. So our name is Sora Sech. Just look with our eyes and to see how everything is Torah, everything is spirituality, everything we're going through, and to understand that to really understand the Torah, to really become one with godliness, we have to understand the people around us because if the whole so the whole Kumashlema, that all the souls of the Jewish people, the 600,000 souls and the millions of other souls, billions of souls that are connected through that whole experience that happened at Har Sinai, Kabbalah Satoya, that that whole experience that we went through on a, on, a, on a global level, that global revelation that happened in history, that, that to understand that, to be able to open that experience up, we have to allow ourselves that our eyes and our heart, our need to be so we have to dabek our heart and our, and our eyes to, to be able to see that everything is a revelation, that everything constantly is being revealing this spirituality. And in order to understand and the Torah. We have to have Abbas we have to love our fellow man and woman, <laughs> PC, fellow human. So we have to love our fellow people because in order to be able to reveal the, the true completion of Torah, the true completion of Hashem's goal and mission and spirituality, we have to open up that light that's hidden within each person and each experience of life, that there's really spirituality within everything and every person. And there's no reason to allow our our jealousy and our desires and our, our need for honor to block ourselves to connect to another person because it's just hurting us, it's hurting them, it's hurting the world, it's affecting the world on a real level. And we have ability through the Torah, through the revelation of Shavavim, to return to Hashem, to have true tshuva, to really understand what it means to reveal this light in the world of love and positivity and truth in our daily life. Yeah, Bahava, this love is the whole prayer is everlasting love, abundant love. To reveal that, then we can come to the Shema Yisrael, which is also funny enough, six words. Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad. Hear Yisrael, listen. Yisrael, pay attention, wake up. Souls, wake up. The souls of Yisrael. Open up all the, the letters of the Torah. Open up all the souls of the world. And remember, Hashem, who, remember we mentioned the name of God, Yudkev Avke, is this revelation. Elokeinu, Hashem Elokeinu, He's our God. Hashem, this revelation, Echad, He's one. These six weeks, these six words we say on a daily level in morning and night, this is our Ikka, Kiyam of Torah, the, the, the Ikka, Kviyas of Torah, no matter what a person has to do in a day. By just saying six words, you already make a unification in the world. That is the minimal amount of learning Torah that a person needs to do on a daily level. Even if you can't get to this Yam, this ocean of Torah in Mishpatim, and you're not able to learn all of Shas, like these big Roshivas that passed away recently, and you've been not holding at a level of such greatness and Torah like the previous generations, like the Vilna God, and, and all these big Gaonim, we don't have these kind of people around as much, I mean, or Rav Asher Weiss of our time, or you know, Chaim Kham Kaneski. We're not on that level yet, so we have an opportunity on a daily level right now to just say Shemai to Al Hashem Echein Hashem Echad, and we are Makayim. We are. We have fulfilled our obligation to bring to, to not only learn Torah but to bring unification in the world, to be part of this ultimate unification that the Baal Shem Tov was trying to reveal so so intensely in every single person, no matter what level they're on, on every single place in the whole world. That's the Oyer of Mashiach. That's the light of Mashiach. That's the light of an Ahafachu to turn the darkness into light, turn all the pain and this Corona challenge, this seemingly isolating experience into unification, united souls. And that's the kind of energy we want to take with us going into this new Chodesh. I wish everyone a good Chodesh. Friday, it's going to be Rosh Chodesh already, Thursday night, Friday, and Shabbos. And it's to take Pasha Mishpatim. We're going to have Pasha Shkolem. We're going to get some of that Shefa in the world, that that inner level of the money, what's really behind all of the kesev, all the money and all the desires of the world, is this true desire just to connect to that godliness, that unification. That's the inner fire, the ash of the shkolem. That's the Avram and Sarah, that's the 
Ahava and Sholem, and that's the ability, that fire, to fan fire, to light us up, to go into this next Dalit Pashias, these four holy Pashas, which is connected to the four letters of the name of God. And we begin first with the Yud, the Yud of the Shema Vaya. The Yud is that the minimal amount of spirituality that you need, the minimal amount of connection that God needs to do just to bring that initial awareness, that Chochmah Elyon, that little dot of connection and the Yud of the and that's the first Pasha is connected to that that revelation of Shkolim, that little coin, that little bit that makes the difference when you put the coin inside the pushka and the person can now buy food or whatever they need to do. It's the idea of the Shkolim, or we use it for the base of English to make bring even more revelation in the world through the Holy Avoda and the Mishkan, which we'll be talking about next week. Please God, this is the kind of energy we need to take with us. This kind of revelation, the Muna class. And you guys should join us. Keep joining us on a weekly level. And please God, we'll do the United Souls course. And no matter what, please God, all the people we have a full shlema, full healing, and all our dedications to be Makayim. You guys need to make it real. I can't do this alone. It's a universal experience. We're all together experiencing this. And please God, we'll have amazing Wi Fi so everything will work. Gavaldic. And I hopefully it worked anyway. And we'll put up these classes to bring out the truth that they're the truth of love in our daily life. Amen. Thank you for tuning in and have a beautiful week and Shabbos and a good Chodesh. Wow, a lot of good stuff going on. Thank you.